Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Talos. I'm the current PTL for the Sahara project, and I'm going to present today our overview of the project and updates that we're planning for this cycle and the future two cycles that we have ahead of us. I was going to present this with Elise as well, but she, due to some medical issues, she's not going to be here, so it's just going to be me. So first, I'm going to tell you a little bit of what Sahara does. If anyone here is not familiar with Sahara, Sahara is the data processing uh, service in OpenStack. And what it does, it, it provides a way for users to deploy clusters of data processing engines without minimum effort, with minimum effort from the user. So Sahara allows the user to create Hadoop clusters, uh, Spark clusters, and Storm clusters at this point, and have different vendors of, of Hadoop, like Cloudera, Mepar, Ambari, and have Storm and Spark, as I said. And another important part of Sahara is that it provides a way for the users to deploy jobs into these data processing clusters. So the user won't have to log in into that machine to run the job. It can, it can do it from the horizon, the OpenStack interface. So uh, Sahara was founded during, during the June release of OpenStack. And this latest release, we had contributions from 55 people. Uh, but actively, there were like nine or 10, I, I guess. Most of the contributions, like most of the contributors just wrote one patch or did a small review or something. But active contributors will have a small group of nine to 10 people. Uh, at the latest, latest survey, the, uh, it's, it said that 11% of the clouds in production or tests phase indicating they are using Sahara at this point. So uh, with the, that 11%, 3% said that they were using in production and 8% using in, in the test phase. And 25% of the people in the survey said they're considering using Sahara in, uh, in their clouds. So I'm going to talk a little bit of how Sahara actually works. So Sahara uses the user to deploy data processing clusters. But clusters is like the end product of what Sahara does. In the middle, there are some steps that you need to do to have this cluster running. And the first step that you need to create are node group templates. The node group templates is going to identify what parts, what nodes are going to do in that cluster. So for example, in a Hadoop cluster, you have a master node. Usually, you have a master node, and you have a slave node. So in Sahara, you're going to have to create a template for that master. You're going to have to create another template for that slave and choose what processes are going to be running on each of these node group templates. Once you have the node group templates ready, you can create a cluster template, which actually just put those together, and you can select how many of each you're going to use. So for example, in Hadoop, you usually only have one master node, but you're going to have like 10 or hundreds, hundreds of slave nodes running on that cluster, depending on, on the scale out that you want. And another important part of Sahara is that it allows the job processing. That, that's actually very important in some cases. That's something that we're working on very hard to get it better and better every, every day. That's called the elastic data processing part of Sahara. And that's divided in three main parts. The data sources, which, are, which is the part where you, sell, uh, you can put your data in. And Sahara is going to read from that, that, that source. And also, you can put a data source as an output of the, data, of the Sahara processing. So data source is going to store your data that's going to go in into the cluster. And also, it's going to come out of the cluster. The job binary is the jar file that you're actually running inside your cluster. So when you, you can, to run this job in Sahara, you can create, you have to create a job binary inside of the Sahara project where you, sub, you, you put a path of this jar file, which right now we usually use Swift to store the jar files. So you just point out this job binary to this Swift URL where the jar file is stored so we can put pull that to run the job inside the cluster. And the job templates, which put the, puts the whole thing together. So you, with the job templates, you're going to select the input data source. You're going to select the output data source. You're going to select the, the, the cluster that you're going to run. And you can submit the job to be run in the cluster. Uh, the architecture of Sahara is 
a very basic OpenStack architecture. So we have a REST, we have a REST API where we, have, we receive all the requests from Horizon and the Sahara client or CLI. We authenticate with Kisten. So we have all the configuration configured to authenticate with Kisten. We have a, a, a data access layer, so we manage our own database. We, we secure storage with Barbican, but that's not required yet. Like it, it's not necessary to have Barbican, but it's an option to store stuff in Barbican. And we have two main ports on that architecture. That's the EDP port, which I just explained. So that's the port that manages the job submission port. And we also have the provisioning engine, which is the part that actually creates the cluster and configures the whole thing for the user. So for provisioning a cluster, we use heat. So we create heat templates that, that the heat's gonna communicate with Cinder, Glance, Neutron, uh, Ironic, or anything that we want to create those machines. And the data source up there is gonna, it's just a kind of outside of Sahara, but it's very important because that's where we're gonna store the files and the data to be processed. Um, let's see. Uh, the interesting part there as well is the vendor plugins. So Sahara is, is created in a plugin based. So we have different plugins for each data processing engine that we, that we run today. So we have a Hadoop plugin. We have, for Hadoop, we have actually three different plugins. We have upstream Hadoop, so that's our vanilla plugin. We have Cloudera, we have the, the Cloudera vendor, we have Mepar, and we have Ambari. So actually four different plugins for Hadoop. We have Spark inside of Ambari and upstream as well. And we have Storm upstream. We don't have any vendors plugins for Storm. So talking about the new features that we're gonna be working, that we are actually working on Pike, I think the biggest one is the ability to create and validate images inside Sahara. So one thing that I, I actually skipped mentioning is to use Sahara, we create images with the data processing engine already installed on it. That's because uh, before we used to create that on the fly, so when creating the cluster, we'll download the files to install Hadoop, for example, in the image while the cluster was creating, but that takes like a long time, especially with vendor plugins. For example, I think the Cloudera plugin is over one gigabyte. So that would take forever if you haven't, if you were creating a big cluster. So we encourage people to create the, the image with Cloudera already installed. So you can just, Sahara can just use that image to create a new virtual machine and then we configure that after the, the instance is created. And for that, we actually provide a project called Sahara Image Elements, which uses Disk Image Builder to create the instance, to create the image, and we can use that. But the downside of that, it's very complicated to get it working. Disk Image Builder is not the most friendly image creation tool, and Anyone who's actually worked this so knows that it has some difficult to get it working. So we are actually creating a new way to create images for Sahara. And that's gonna be, we're gonna use libgastfs to manipulate the images. And this is gonna actually make it a lot easier for us because libgastfs doesn't, we don't need to reset everything after it fails. So libgastfs gives us the opportunity to just keep growing the image. So if it failed at some point, we can just do a little tweak and work from that point on. So the image won't be needed to be rebuilt completely every time. And also this feature is very important because after the image is created, we're gonna have a validation process in Sahara. So we're gonna run checks during the, uh, before the cluster is created to verify that the image has everything that it needs to have to create properly and the cluster will be running properly after with Sahara. So this is like one of the biggest features that we're gonna have right now because certainly it's gonna make life of, the life of the users very easier to start with Sahara because most of the people that we know and that we try to introduce to Sahara had a very hard time working with the images from the start to actually start creating clusters. So that's gonna be a big improvement for us. 
The other improvement that we did actually is already on master, so it's going to be definitely released on on Pike is that we facilitated the addition of new data sources and job types. So before the data sources and job types was kind of hard coded inside Sahara. And recently we had a work done that transformed that into a plugin based code. So we can have like different plugins for data sources and job types, just as we have for Hadoop, Spark and Storm. So if you, we want to add a new data source for Sahara, it's going to be fairly easy right now. And we're actually planning to add a new data source for S3. So Amazon S3, it's, gonna, it's probably going to be um, not in Pike, but probably in Queen, going to be there. So hopefully you can get that working. And one interesting feature, which is actually there, but most people don't really know it, is that we have bare metal to tenant, meaning that we can actually use Sahara to create clusters with bare metal nodes not only virtual machine nodes. That means like, that's one of the major things that we have because big data don't really run well on virtual machines. Like real big data, you need bare metal nodes to run that. And now with Sahara, you can actually do that. And it's still a thing that we need to improve because it's fairly new and it needs a, we need a little more testing and it's not always easy to get like a good lab with bare metal nodes to test this because it's, it's not cheap to buy computers to be trying that stuff. So yeah, it's something that's going to be a, a, huge, a huge like divider for Sahara because we believe that once we get that properly working and we advertise that, people are going to actually start using it more because you're going to have like the use case that most people want, which is having clusters in bare metal nodes easier than we do today. Um, that's, this slide shows a little bit of the, the teams that we focused on the Pike release. So scalability, scalability was not a focus for us on this release because we're actually at a very good stage when you talk about scalability. And so we focus a little bit more on resiliency, meaning uh, and that big improvement on that was the, the image validation and creation part. So we're trying to make Sahara not break that easily. We want it to leave more and clusters to be like harder to, to fail when creating, which is very frustrating for a, a person who's trying to use when it keeps failing and failing over and over. So we're trying to make that easier for people. Uh, another f major focus that we had was user experience and that's comes back to that image creation. We want, we try, we're trying to make the use of Sahara a lot easier than it was before because it took a little while to get to know all the parts of Sahara when you start, we started to working with it. But right now we're trying to make these steps easier. So we're trying to make the user lo uh, like we did before with Hadoop. So right now you don't have to configure Hadoop. You, you will, we want the user to work less on Sahara to get it working. So that's something that we are focusing on Pike, make th making things easier for the user. On Queen, we have a different, little bit different focus. So we're going to focus a little bit more on security and modularity. And this modularity stuff, I'm going to explain a little bit later because right now, and, uh, Sahara plugins are released inside of Sahara code. And that's something that is actually good for us, but in some, some cases it can be a little bit bad because we, sh we could release uh, updates on the plugins faster than we could release op uh, OpenStack releases. And this means that right now, if I have uh, Spark 2.1.0, which is the newest version, and you have the Okada version of OpenStack, you won't be able to get Spark 2.1.0. You're only, you're only going to be able to get that after you upgrade to Pike. And we, we're studying the possibility to remove the plugins code from inside of Sahara. And this will, will make a new library with only the plugins. This will allow the users to only up, update the plugins library. And then you're going to keep the Pike, you're going to keep the Okada version of OpenStack, but you're going to get the new plugins on, on Sahara. That's something that we're studying. We're not sure like how well that's going to be for us and if the, the community is going to accept, the user is going to accept that. We're still studying and looking for 
looking for the opportunity to do that because actually, from my point of view, it's something great for us and the user. So, and another major release, a uh, major feature in Queens is going to be the release of API v2 of Sahara. So API v2 of Sahara is kind of a like for people who who are involved in the develop, development of Sahara, know that it's gonna it's been there like forever. Like I started working in Sahara in 2013, and there was already documents talking about API v2 of Sahara back then, and but it was never done. And this is actually something that I, I like kind of focused on. It's like we need to have that because it, our API right now it's kind of divided and it has like, we actually have two APIs that are not completely integrated with each other, and we need to make that stronger and a, a, lot, uh, a lot better API. So the API v2 is going to be an, a better API for, for Sahara. It's going to make things easier for the user, and it's going to be released in Queens, hopefully. We're, gonna, we're almost done with the implementation in Pike, so we plan to finish everything, implement, to have everything implemented in Pike, and have everything tested in Queen. So we can release something that we're actually sure that works and the users won't have any trouble with that. And so they focus on, on the R. So right now I actually can change that R to Rocky because it's going to be the Rocky release. Back when I created these slides, there wasn't a name for it. But we're going to focus a little bit on scalability. So we have to always come back to check that because our project is meant to be scalable and actually facilitate that kind of stuff for the user. So we always have to come back and check how we're doing with that. Stuff like uh, high availability, this kind of stuff, we're not sure if Sahara needs it, but we always have to come back and check and see how it's doing and see if we need to improve in any, any case. We're going to keep, keep working on the resiliency. We're going to focus even more on user experience. That's something that I'm really focused on because I've before I started working on Sahara, I was a user of Sahara. And uh, I know that can be hard to start using. So I, that's something that I actually focus a lot. So make, making things easier for the user to get, it, to get a start and making the project easier for, on the first contact. Um, security, interoperability, interoperability is something that we have to keep working with other projects, like we always have to check with HEAT if everything is working nice with our communication, because we, we kind of depend on HEAT right now to work. So that's something that we always have to come back a little bit and check how we're doing and we need to improve. Uh, I think that's all I have. Uh, I have a question for people here now, actually. Uh, and this question is, like, what are the major difficulties that you have when you're trying to deploy Sahara, or most importantly, when you try to use Sahara. And that's something that we need to know from the users because we are used to it, we are used to Sahara, and we don't see the flaws like right in front of our faces that people who are getting to work with it know, uh, can see. So that feedback is like most important for us. And if you have anything for us, we're, most, uh, we're grateful to hear and we want to work to make that that better for us and for you guys, like the most important part of the users. So please, if you have any feedback for us, just let us know what you need and we're gonna try to work on it. And now we have like time for questions. If you, if you have any, please come to the mic so we, we have that on, on, the, on the recording. So thank you guys. API v2 going to include micro version support? Um, we want to, and that's actually something that I'm, I'm working on. I've already, like, I've been on all the API working groups, meetings, and read, read all the documents. We plan to, to have the API with micro versions on, on API v2, but we have some discussions about the problem with consistent. Uh, backward compat compatibility and maintaining too many APIs. So that's something that we're still working on on Sahara. We're not sure how exactly we're going to do it, but we're probably going to have API v2 with micro versions. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. OK. <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't have any questions right now, if you don't want to come to the mic, just come to me after. I can, we can just talk a little bit. So thank you guys for listening. I hope you guys use Sahara and 
Let us know what problems are and how we can make it better for you. Thank you.